All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of crypto news stuff for you today. And eh, we're going to speed through this one because I had a really long night last night and I don't feel so good. But there is some pretty big news today. And the first thing I want to talk about is that the disgraced crypto exchange Quadriga CX accidentally sent nearly $400,000 uh, to the uh, CEO's Bitcoin wallet. Whoops, whoopsies. Uh, on February 12th, Ernst & Young, the monitor of the Quadriga case, released its first report uh, with the Supreme Court of Nova Scotia in it. Uh, they stated that the exchange inadvertently moved $370,000 in Bitcoin to a cold wallet controlled by CEO Gerald Cotton, who passed away. So on February 6, 2019, Quadriga inadvertently sent 103 Bitcoin valued at approximately um, 468000 Canadian dollars to Quadriga cold wallets which the company is currently unable to access. Whoops. Oh, no. Not again. Uh, the monitor is working with management to retrieve this crypto from the various cold wallets, if possible. So, what does this all mean? If the Bitcoin holdings of users, if the CEO passed away and access to the company's cold wallets or offline wallets cannot be restored, the $370,000 in Bitcoin inadvertently sent to the cold wallets cannot be recovered. And as, for, as such, uh, for now, the company and the creditors of Quadriga only have access to the company's hot wallets, but uh, uh, they disclosed that the hot wallets of Quadriga have less than a million dollars in them, which is nowhere near enough to pay back the company who owes well over $150 million. So the monitor was advised that Quadriga held the following cryptocurrency balances um, within their Canadian currency equivalent aggregating to $902,000 within its hot wallets on its servers at, at the filing date. Whether it's a hot wallet or a cold wallet, major cryptocurrency exchanges typically go through additional measures to ensure that funds are sent to the right addresses. Well, if uh, they sent it to the wrong address, why not just uh, take that address that they sent it to? And now that's their cold wallet, apparently. But uh, I, I guess they won't send that out either. So nobody can actually look into this cold wallet even still. So sending 370,000 Bitcoin uh, from a hot wallet to a cold wallet, the company knows cannot be accessed as equivalent to a company sending hundreds of thousands of dollars to a wrong bank account that the company does not control, which just does not occur. And in this case, uh, it'd probably be actually easier to send it to the wrong bank account because then you could at least contact that bank and be like, hey, can we have that money back? So at the very least, um, you, you could get your money back. In this case, you can't. So already is reported by the Wall Street suspicions on the legitimacy of the explanation provided by Quadrica on the loss of $190 million in funds intensified as independent researchers could not find sufficient evidence to prove the existence of cold wallets owned by the exchange. So nobody's really found the existence of these cold wallets, which brings me to uh, today's article. So that one was from last night, and this one is, uh, I think, believe for just today. And blockchain analysis ties five Bitcoin addresses to the Quadrica exchange. And um, so the discovery in a notable light of Quadrica's claim that they've been unable to access these wallets, which held a lion's share of $190 million since the death of their CEO. In court filings, the company has said Cotton has uh, the sole responsibility for moving the funds, which is like the worst idea I've ever heard. But Quadrica did not share its cold wallet addresses, driving many researchers to try to trace the transactions to determine which wallets these were, as well as uh, whether they were truly contained the $136 million in crypto, including about $92 million worth of Bitcoin said to be held offline. So a clue came in Tuesday um, when Quadrica's court appointed a monitor in the creditor protection case, which from yesterday, uh, in the first uh, progress to report to Canadian court, um, they revealed that on February 6th, Quadrica mistakenly moved that 350000 It just wildly varies um, to the cold wallets, which the company is currently unable to access. Internet Sleuths then found a group of addresses that had received multiple small transfers on that date, totaling 104,000 Bitcoin, nearly the same amount mentioned in the report. Prior to this, these addresses had not seen any transaction since April. So uh, we have a few um, addresses here, and they've received just a little bit of Bitcoin. Uh, but as you can see, like total, they have quite a bit in them. So this address that I just pasted into the Block Explorer here has 13,000. Um, and we can do it with another one and see how much this one has. Let's we'll go boom, and we'll go boom, and then uh, again, boom, and see what we got. Uh, this one has uh, coincidentally 13,312 as well, so they have a lot in them. 
So uh, it goes to show that uh, these may be the cold wallets of, of Quadrica. However, stepping back, it's important to uh, be careful when analyzing the Bitcoin blockchain as it goes on to say that uh, unlike the account-based Ethereum and Bitcoin, which we considered a wallet, is often not one address but a group of them. In the UTXO model, addresses designate not accounts but transaction outputs, the parts uh, into which initial amounts of Bitcoin are split during transactions. So those could be the wrong addresses, essentially, uh, and somebody could just be uh, trying their best in order to find them. However, I find it very weird that uh, the uh, whoever transferred this 103 Bitcoin couldn't just be like, well, this was the wallet that I transferred it to and show it to the public so that everybody could see this and then be like, okay, well, this, this uh, coin is actually his hidden in these wallets so we can kind of drop the conspiracy theory at the very least at least we're half of it at the very least and be like okay they do have them in the wallet so at least we know that they weren't just totally stolen and laundered which is a big uh problem right now because some people think that they laundered all of the money that they were insolvent before all of this and uh that they were just laundering the money through these different exchanges and that there were never any cold wallets so again i will keep up on the quadrica case for you guys and uh find out uh uh, what happens from all this but uh as of right now there is a company on the case if you will uh trying to crack it if you will i don't know i got nothing so moving on uh interestingly enough jp morgan launches its own cryptocurrency the jpm coin pegged to the us dollar so they release their own their very own s coin no bitcoin is a scam guys but trust our uh dollar pegged uh s coin and i like to say s coin because i don't like to be demonetized but you guys get what that means you know what that means the largest bank in the united states jp morgan launched its first fiat bank cryptocurrency it's the first bank to launch a cryptocurrency in a surprise move the investment bank has launched a stable coin like token which will be used anywhere from settling cross-border payments to using the bank's treasuries so anything that uh currently exists uh, in the world is that moves on to the blockchain this would be the payment leg for that transaction so jamie diamond right here this nice character of him uh, i'll fire any of my traders the ceo remember of the company i'll fire any of my traders caught trading bitcoin this that and the other thing bitcoin's a scam bitcoin's a bubble bitcoin's toxic but let's make a stable coin hmm okay so i wouldn't trust this one uh as far as i could throw it the banking giant handles about six trillion in daily transactions of which a tiny portion would be conducted using the newly created s coin jpm coin awesome guys right uh bitcoin's a scam but our coin is not apparently i don't know the applications are frankly quite endless yeah remember bitcoin uh, so the applications with that are endless as well and other cryptocurrencies uh anything where you can have a distributed ledger which involves corporations or institutions so is, are they just like turning i really have a feeling that jp morgan was fudding the whole time so that they could like buy bitcoin or so that they could just lower the price and that they, they could get into it somehow uh it's just it just boggles my mind the jpm coin will be issued on quorum blockchain and subsequently extended to other platforms jpm coin will be operable on all standard blockchain networks wow guys so uh so is it still a scam or i don't know i it, this is a real actual story that's going around so this is true um it just boggles my mind uh how uh, how funny jamie diamond was and then he's just like hey let's just make our own stable coin uh, why i don't know just screw it let's just do it um it's just it, it it almost like angers me a little bit but uh i'm fine don't worry about me so moving on to uh another uh, new positive news that's been going around lately, and that's Lightning Network now lets you order pizza with Domino's with Bitcoin for less than one cent. Okay, the pizzas are not one cent. It's the fees that are less than one cent. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, hey, Domino's, at least it's not Papa John's. Because if you guys ever tried Papa John's, it's like the worst pizza ever. And then Domino's. So, you know what I mean? They're like second place for worst pizza. And then you've got Papa John's. So if this was a Papa John's article, I wouldn't even read it. At least Domino's is reasonably good. Papa John's, don't order Papa John's. I promise you, it's really terrible. Uh, so Lightning Pizza is the latest offering from San Francisco-based Bitcoin payment app Fold. Uh, claims to be the first nationwide retail service powering Lightning Network payments uh, meant to spread utility and spur awareness and adoptions. Users are able to select pizza from Domino's or, uh, for uh, collection or delivery to any U.S. address. Payment is done with Bitcoin, specifically using Lightning Network, uh, uh, with confirmations almost instantly with a fee of less than one cent. 
And every order is 5% off uh, with uh, less than one cent transaction fees, instant settlements, and 30-minute delivery time, or at least so Domino's promises anyway. Uh, so it's interesting because how could you ever get less than one cent transaction fee in the fiat world? Because how could I give you half of a penny? How could I not give you a penny uh, at the very least? But with Bitcoin, you sure can because you just give them a couple Satoshis. Um, the service is currently in an initial phase with users reporting they were unable to access the full range of Domino's products available via the regular menu. So it's a little jacked up apparently, but uh, if you actually click on this, you go to uh, Lightning Pizza and 5% uh, off all purchases. So you can do carry out or delivery. And if you hit delivery, it says carry out is recommended if you don't want to expose your address. Uh, and then you can continue to order and find the nearest Domino's from there. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm, it, it just it just gives more validity to Bitcoin that you can actually you know buy things with it. Uh, because I remember even a few years back, like you just couldn't buy anything with Bitcoin. Uh, I remember there would be news articles like mom and pop antique store in New York City accepts Bitcoin. And you're like, well, I don't live anywhere near New York City. I don't buy antiques. That just has so little effect on the Bitcoin world that it's it just... It, I guess it's a first of its kind. That's great. But it just goes over my head because when am I ever going to use that mom and pop store in New York City that accepts Bitcoin? But uh, more and more things are accepting Bitcoin now. And we just really need that ball to get rolling to really have people accept uh, cryptocurrency and start using it. Because, again, uh, it can be much cheaper than, in some cases, using uh, actual real money. they well, fiat money anyway, uh, because less than one cent transaction fee, that's just not possible with fiat money because there's no, nothing less than a penny, um, or at least in the U.S. denomination. So moving on to coin market cap here, $120 billion market cap still trading sideways after that big pump about six days ago. This is a seven-day graph, and we're just about out of there with that seven-day graph. So, so far, uh, no big dump, but we have seen a slight ink decline uh, since that because there hasn't been any action since. There hasn't been anything that's really been sparking the price. People have been sort of speculating on the Litecoin price with the halvening coming up uh, uh, in, a, in a bit. I think it's like 150 days away or something like that. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that will have too much of an effect on Litecoin. Uh, it might just have a negative effect for a while because then Litecoin script miners will not be making that much uh, in that case. So... Again, nothing too crazy to uh, you know talk about with Coin Market Cap here today. Uh, it's the winners of the day, uh, Bat and Mona Coin, interestingly enough, and uh, loser of the day, Monero, uh, which is kind of surprising. But uh, that's all I have for you guys today. I had to make it a relatively short day. I had didn't have much time. I had a really long night. Uh, not feeling incredible. I think you probably hear that in my no in in my voice a little bit. But that's okay. I'm still gonna just tromp through the mud and get you that crypto news either way uh so make sure you subscribe to the channel like this video that helps me out a lot to my social media and the link in the descriptions below uh my twitter my twitch and my steam account go ahead and follow me on those if you get the opportunity that's all i have for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed it and as usual i will see you next time